Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I am the Niche Fragrance Collector. I'm a huge fan of all things niche perfumery. And you probably may have noticed in some of my lineup videos, aquatic or citrus or woody ambers, that there's always a Zerjoff in that collection, in that mix. Why? <laughs> you may ask, why? Well, because I, I really enjoy Zerjoff. I really enjoy the, the Zerjoff house. I really enjoy their uh, library of perfumes. And I find that there, well, look, so Orto Parisi, I also love the Orto Parisi range. However, Orto Parisi is designed for the niche lover, a person who's come in from designers, a designer fragrances, is going to, in my opinion, find the Orto Parisi a little bit challenging. Uh, they're gonna find them that they're like, what is going on? I don't quite understand. What I love about Zerja, you could be a brand new person coming into niche and you will find something that you will instantly fall in love with. And you could be someone who is, <laughs> I, I normally say knee deep, but I'm gonna say now like, you know, up to here in perfumes, enough for seven lifetimes, okay? Uh, and yet you will still find a fragrance in that Zerjoff library that you're gonna be, where have you been all my life? So today what I wanted to do is share seven that I really love. The other reason that I mentioned seven is because I do want to go across the Michael Edwards fragrance wheel. Those who have been following my channel, you know that I love talking about the fragrance wheel. I find that this is an easy way for you to identify where do you live. So when, when it comes to fragrance notes or when it comes to fragrance families. So what I want to do is I want to show you uh, a, a nice cross-reference across that wheel. Yeah, there's something for everybody. Now, before I go any further, I wanna thank the good people from Libertine Perfumery. We're doing a promo at the moment. You have a chance to win a free bottle of Starlight, brand new fragrance that has arrived here in Australia, uh, valued at $400. If you wanna know more, I'm gonna give details to that at the end of this video. There are chapter marks down below. If you don't wanna hear me talking about anything, go straight to that, find out how you can win that free bottle of Starlight. And actually it's right here. And I'm going to be talking about that next week, but more about that later. So let me begin. My very first love that I had within the Zerjoff a library of fragrances was this divine um, fragrance that I, in my opinion, I believe everyone should, should also own. It's called Naxos. Now I like, I'm going to say, as I said that, I've, I just had a feeling that there is probably 90% of you guys out there going, Naxos, of course, I mean, why would you not own this fragrance? So if you're new to niche and if you're new to the house of Zerjoff, my recommendation is commence right here. This is a, an easy unisex fragrance. As I was preparing today, the biggest temptation is not to put these on skin because I'm gonna have way too many fragrances on my, on my body. But this one here, the moment you spray, you just, well, for me, I just wanna, I just wanna wear it. I just wanna put it on me. The easiest definition to this fragrance is that it's a tobacco honey-like fragrance. However, this is a tobacco that is very smooth. There are some tobacco fragrances that tend to be very earthy, um, tend to be a little bit more on the woody side. Whereas here, I'm, you know, I'm, and I've actually mentioned that this for me is more, it almost leans a little bit towards the gourmand. There are vanilla notes in here. For me, the honey note really pops in this particular fragrance. The orchestration of this particular perfume is divine. Works well as a winter fragrance, works well as a summer fragrance, works, works awesome as a, a going out fragrance. I'm gonna say that as a date fragrance, so you're meeting someone for the very first time and you're wearing Naxos, you would be intoxicating. You would just, the aura, the, 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 the sillage that this produces, I'm telling you, the, the person will be powerless. You know, if they smell this on you, they will be powerless. Glorious scent. If you're new to niche, this is an awesome place to begin. If, you're, if you've been in niche for a while and you don't have Naxos, you actually need this in your collection. This one here will never, you will never go wrong with this particular fragrance. I'm gonna give you a heads up, everyone. Um, I have a feeling, I mean, that was Naxos and that was like, what, two hours and 42 minutes. Um, this might be a long video. So I, I'm gonna, I, I don't, I don't wanna rush it. I'll be, but at the same time, I'm gonna to try to keep moving through, but anyway, skip. I'm gonna put chapters down the bottom. Skip if you wanna like, yeah, I get it, man, I, I've got it. Anyway, Naxos, Naxos, beautiful, beautiful. The next one here, let's say it's a little bit more feminine leaning. This is categorized as a floral amber, what used to be known as floral oriental. For me, the opening was this delicate peach and strawberry combination. 
on my skin as it dries down. It goes into this beautiful vanilla, ambery musk on, on the final dry down. You would think that something with that sort of orchestration, strawberry, peach, vanilla, ambery musk, would be very female leaning. And yeah, as I said, this is more female leaning when it comes to its scent profile. However, I wear this and on me, it smells, by my own admission, it smells divine. It does. It smells just, it's an it's a awesome summery fragrance that I love wearing. I've actually been complimented by both men and women when I'm wearing this. The sillage on this is moderate to full. It has just, it does have a wonderful trail. The push on it is fantastic. It will fill a room when it comes to the, the, the potency that it has. Yet on, on skin, it, because uh, here's, the, here's the dangerous thing. When you have a note like strawberry and peach, you could fall into the category of uh, like those cosmetic houses that sell skincare product that they love to amp up the fruity notes in their moisturizers. I mean, I know this because my, my niece loves wearing this and, and it, it's pugnant. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that, but it's way too synthetic. It's way too intense. Um, it just doesn't smell, it doesn't smell right. So strawberry and peach with vanilla, you would think that you start to go into that particular realm and it might just be a little bit, a bit synthetic-like. This is the most a realistic, delicate fragrance that the composition on this is spectacular. One thing that I do know that Zerjoff, that they do across all their perfumes, they use exceptionally good quality oils. I find that for me, this works fantastic on a man. I find that my body, my own natural oils, amplifies musk in, in the actual fragrance. So on the dry down, I'm still getting some of those, I mean, the, the strawberry and peaches come down. I am getting some vanilla notes. I am getting those slightly fruity tones, but the musk really begins to amplify a lot more on me. For me, this is my summer fragrance. This is a, a beautiful, bright, um, summery day. This is going out of an evening. Uh, it's a very happy, in my opinion, a very happy scent. Zerjoff, he goes to another level when it comes to the packaging and when it comes to the, the different elements that he adds to the, the fragrance. So yes, you obviously you're buying it for the perfume. So on the La Capital, um, it's part of the Shooting Star collection, which means that there is a meteorite sample with a certificate. And I did read one comment on, uh, on, on some other website where they were criticizing the uh, the excess when it comes to the packaging because in the end you just throw it away Why would you throw it away? I mean, I think it's designed so that it becomes part of your Your bottle. I mean, I mean look I mean, it's just like I like nice watches The nice watch always comes in a beautiful case. I never throw away that case. I mean, why would you it becomes part of the actual item and in this case here this leather bound case with the indent of the bottle i don't think it's designed to be thrown away this becomes a keepsake alongside your product anyway like i said attention to detail with these guys is just something else next one one was feminine leaning this one here masculine leaning this is the don well actually i always call it the don but it's just don you know what it is because when I think of Don, I think of the Don being Don Corleone, and you never called him Don, it was the Don. This is, this is now more masculine. Actually, I'm gonna put this on skin. And I knew this was gonna happen, but I'm gonna run out of real estate. All right, this is, so gentlemen, uh, okay, so ladies, yes, if you like, this style of fragrance. It is also uh, tobacco. Okay, so it's part of the Join the Club collection, meaning that Sergio Momo, who is the creator of Zerjoff, has not revealed what notes go into here. The essence of it is smell it, take it as a composition. If you enjoy it, fabulous. If you don't, find something else in the library. Sometimes, and, and I know that this is true of myself, Sometimes I get caught up in notes and not really consider 
what is it that this fragrance is trying to tell me? You know, who is this fragrance and how does it make me feel and how would I use it? Things of that nature. So in this case here, which I like, there are no notes being revealed. We just have to make our own, I guess, assessment or uh, assumption as to what it's about. Clues are given in the actual name, Don. And as I mentioned, it definitely is gentleman's fragrance. It's all about whiskey. It's about leather. There are some sweeter tones that come through. I get a smoky vibe out of this. And when I first sprayed it, I remember I'm like, whoa, there's a metallic, smoky, something on that opening as it dries down a little bit. I'm getting a slight leather tone. I don't get, um, people say that it's cigar-like. I don't get very cigar-like. I mean, for me, that tobacco component is found more in Naxos than I find in Don. So I just look at this as a composition. This is my suit-up fragrance. I love wearing this uh, going into a business meeting. This is going into a formal um, dinner or whatever it may be. This is an awesome companion in that regard. I find that the sillage on this is fantastic. I'm getting between a moderate to full. People around me are definitely picking up this fragrance. I get a beautiful trail as a result. When it comes to longevity, seven to eight hours comfortably on this particular fragrance. And I, uh, two, my Lord. Uh, and I, I always spray three. So three sprays, more than enough. And this particular fragrance does fall into that dry woods category. I love it. Nice, classic, masculine fragrance. The next one in that join the club is more than words. Now, I've always admitted to being an Oud rookie. When I first started the channel, the, the Oud note was something that, um, it scared me. The problem was that I was testing Oud fragrances that I'm gonna say had Indian Oud in it. The Indian Oud is a lot more pugnant. Um, it's a lot more fecal-like so that smells like poop um, whereas the and I'm going to talk about these other ones here in a minute Zerjoff is using either a Laos or Thai Oud in their composition so you'll find that it has floral woody tones to it it still has that Oudness about it so if you're not familiar with Oud um, it still has that that Oud component to it but not it's not that overdrive that you'll find in the Indian style of Oud, which is quite pugnant. When I first came across More Than Words, I, I wasn't a fan. And, and not because I just wasn't ready for Oud. That's what my problem was. And I think I, I cooked myself when it comes to those early Oud fragrances. And then the moment I smelt that slight Oud note, I, I'm like, I, I backed away in pure fear. <laughs> When you smell a really pugnant oud uh, perfume, you know what I mean. Whereas this sweetheart here, oh my gosh, another one. I, I have to spray on skin again. Uh, so we're going to go here. This is one that also needs to be experienced. Comfortably unisex. In my family, the males, the females are all wearing it. Even my granddaughter, she actually enjoys wearing. Uh, I, I, I have a look at this video. I mentioned how when my children or my grandchildren come over, they always ask me, can, you know, what fragrances can they put on? Now, since then, little Allegra enjoys more than words. Actually, I love it when she wears it because active child and her, the sillage that she produces as she runs around the house is spectacular. This starts off with this wonderful fruity tones to it. I love the opening of this, uh, this particular fragrance. It does go, I guess you could classify it as a, a, a rose oud kind of fragrance. However, those fruity tones at the beginning create, it's not a classic uh, rose oud. There are those, like I said, the fruity tones that are at the beginning of the fragrance. It does this wonderful, it brings a lightness to it. However, however, it's join the club, so we don't know the notes. We're making assumptions. As a composition, this is a sensuous, warm, ambery style of fragrance. So if you like your floral orientals, then more than words is, is something to be experienced. As a man, I do like wearing more than words. I don't find that the florals overpower the oud component of it. So I still have the masculine elements of it. It's, as I said, it's a, it's a warm, it's a sensuous style of fragrance. 
This is something that I love wearing on a cooler evening. I love, wear, I love wearing this at the office. This is my office fragrance. There are healing properties to the oud oil. And for me, I find that as a calming fragrance, more than words, is just a rock star, just divine. I find that the sillage on this is also spectacular. It has nice push, the longevity on it. Let me just tell you, you'll spray it in the morning, You'll smell it the next morning as you wake up. It'll still be on you and on, on your clothes, on your body. On it. This is one of those long lasting fragrances. The, the price tag is a little bit more heftier and we're going to be going a little bit deeper into that. But you'll find that three sprays will take you all day, 12 plus hours comfortably on that. All right. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> uh, so let me, from this point here, if you're new to niche, I would bounce between these without a problem. You'll find something in here that you'll go, no problems. I, I, I'm all, even like if you're brand new to Oud, then more than words is an easy, nice entry. Those early fruits, well, to my nose, those early fruit notes, that rose and the floral that's in there creates uh, just a, a wonderful, soft, smooth Oud fragrance. These other three here, no problems at all. And as I mentioned, Naxos, I don't need to talk about it anymore. You just need to get it. It's an awesome fragrance. Let me move a little bit deeper now. These are a lot more complex. These will last forever. <laughs> if I said that this one here is 12 hours, you're getting three days out of all these guys here. Um, they are, the price tag on these are a little bit more, but I also feel like you're getting a lot more uh, value for your money too. Rich Wood is my compliment God. There is something alluring about this fragrance. The amount of times that I've received, oh my goodness, what are you wearing? For me, this is the best patchouli fragrance that's out there. Let me share this. So why do I love patchouli? I didn't realize that patchouli was such a polarizing note in perfumery. I did uh, a video with a wonderful young lady by the name of Laura, have a look here. Now, Laura is a scent specialist and mentioned to me while we were, were filming together that patchouli is a note that people actually shy away from. They don't like it. For me, patchouli is about travel. So patchouli has this musky component to it, but it's a woody, musky kind of scent. Early on in my filming career, I, we were doing a lot of work in the South Pacific, and for me, Patchouli reminds me of Fiji and that South Pacific sort of region, that there is that musty, woody scent in the air. It's, it's, actually, in the, it's actually in the furnishings. It has a, there, is a, there is a smell that exists in the South Pacific. And for me, I, I define it as patchouli. I love Richwood for its complexity. Here's another one I'm gonna have to spray. Um, hang on a second, because I want to wanna compare these two. So, oh my gosh, I've run out of real estate. All right, I'm going to do on the back of my, yes, I will do on the back. I'm spraying on the palms of my hand. What the heck, man? Who does that? Okay. The opening, spectacular. Citrus, burst, uh, grapefruit just coming through. It does have a rose and a geranium in the heart. And for me, those two, that, that rose component just plays out throughout the, uh, plays out throughout the fragrance. For me though, that patchouli is the king in this fragrance. As it dries down, you're getting that slight, to my nose, I'm getting that slight patchouli mustiness that I love and that I adore. And as I said, reminds me of Fiji and South Pacific but it's not over it's not overpowering it doesn't become the the centerpiece to the fragrance you find that the rose in the heart the vanilla and the musk in the base i find that rich wood is opulent it is very complex in the way that it evolves and moves there isn't one particular note even though i'm saying that it is if you love patchouli you are going to adore this fragrance but yet it's not a patchouli fragrance there are some like for instance i mean i love psychedelic that is a glorious fragrance. However, that is a patchouli fragrance. Whereas this one here, it's, it's rich wood. It's a beautiful, complex, opulent fragrance. The sillage on this is spectacular, as I mentioned, as a compliment god. This one here is, is a winner. When it comes to its longevity, these ones here, you're getting three days out of them. They, they just don't, 
they just they stay within you or they stay on your skin they stay on your clothes there is a beautiful scent that they actually provide richwood uh, I, yeah i love it anyway all right next one so for me smelling perfume is a joy and the only way that i can define it is think of slightly wintry day it is overcast and all of a sudden the clouds part and this beautiful bright ray of sunshine hits you warms your skin that that sunshine just sort of i guess warms your heart that's me with smell that's how i feel about smelling perfume i've always talked about having a fragrance bar it's actually right there my fragrance bar when i come to the office i love seeing my fragrance bar and i love i do this actually this is my for those who have ever watched wallace and gromit this is uh, wallace when he's looking at cheese well, this is me when I'm looking at my fragrance bar, thinking, what fragrance am I gonna wear this morning? So fragrance to me is, so smelling is something that I, I really enjoy. I really find, uh, I find pleasure in. Alexander too gives me, heightens that, that, that pleasure or that pleasurable feeling in its scent profile. As it emanates from me, as I move around, as, I, as the sillage on this is spectacular. For me, Alexandria II is a sweet, floral, ambery, oud fragrance that finds the perfect balance in its composition. Nothing dominates. The whole thing is just perfectly orchestrated. I know that they use Loatian and Thai oud, which brings a smooth softness to that classic oud note. This is glorious. This is a glorious fragrance. I would recommend the following. Find out where, they, where they've got Alexander II. And I recommend spread one on your arm and two on your body. Now I actually do this in store. I actually do a sneaky, lift my shirt up. I spray on my, on my stomach and I spray on my solar plex and then just see how this fragrance evolves. I don't recommend it for someone who is new to niche. I think that this might be a little bit too intense. I know that when I first encountered this, I was new to niche and I, I just wasn't ready for its awesomeness, basically. Uh, if you do want to try out an oud fragrance that is complex, that is amazing, that is divine, I would recommend to you more than words. Give yourself time to come and appreciate the awesomeness that is Alexandria too. Last one. Not the best to last, because I personally, I think all of these, these are not in any form of, of um, a favorite list. So don't see this as that. This has been, I, I designed this, as I mentioned at the start, from uh, if you're new to niche, start here and then move through the journey into these other ones. If you are a gourmand lover, if you love chocolate note in your fragrance, then Symphonium is going to be your bestest of friends. This fragrance here, is something that again needs to be experienced. I find that on card the citrus notes stay very prevalent. Um, it has a beautiful mandarin note, it also has a, I think an Italian orange. Guess what, I'm spraying on my palm, on my hands again. When I first experienced this fragrance here, the thought was a luxurious chocolate. So here in Australia, our luxurious chocolate is lint. Now I'm probably, people in Europe are going lint. This is, that's a supermarket brand uh, or in Australia it, yes it's it, we can find it in the supermarket but it is a um, it's deemed as a luxury chocolate this is so for me lint or enjoying a lint is equal part this fragrant the smell that it has it has a very distinct chocolate smell or a very distinct lint chocolate smell and then the actual obviously the texture and the taste of it so for me symphonium is just a, a spectacular just glorious and gorgeous chocolate scent but with that beautiful bright orange at the start and that mandarin it just creates oh my gosh it just creates this gourmand chocolatey vibe however i find that oh, so i have i have a number of chocolate i do like cacao in my fragrance but nothing like symphonium this is something this is something that I can wear all year round. I find that some of my other chocolate fragrances that I have are more designed for winter. They're a lot more gourmand. They're a lot heavier in their scent profile. I find that Symphonium has a lightness to it. There is a, a woods gourmand sort of phase. This again lasts forever. It'll be on your skin for two, three days. You'll, you'll smell it on your clothes. Uh, when it comes to its, its projection, I find that this one is not so huge. 
So it's between a medium to a body. So as people come in closer to me, to my radius, they're picking up this particular fragrance, but the, the sillage on it is not enormous. If you want a sillage uh, king, rich wood, bada boom, I mean, that will, <laughs> the trail on that will follow you around the corner. Um, whereas I find that Symphonium is more of a fragrance for me. It's a glorious scent that I enjoy. Again, this would be a spectacular office fragrance. This would be a spectacular intimate fragrance. This is something that is not overpowering. It's very much, I mean, I always find that gourmand chocolate scents have a very sensual scent profile to them. So there you have it, seven spectacular fragrances from Zurjoff. Strongly recommend this house. If you haven't explored anything in, in, um, uh, from these guys, start here and then work your way through. I did warn you that this was gonna be a long uh, episode. I do apologize if this has been too much, but I wanted to spend proper time on such a spectacular house. Now, the good people of Libertine, as I mentioned, are giving away a bottle of Starlight. The promo will run from the 27th of May until the 17th of June. And if you purchase any Zerjoff brand off the Libertine website, use the code NFC, you'll go into the draw to win that bottle of Starlight. Thanks so much, everyone. Tell me what is your favorite fragrance within the Zurjoff lineup. I'd love to go out and test it for myself. I have a few others that I haven't put forward. As I said, I really wanted to create enough diversity in here so those people who know where they live can easily sort of identify and move across to that. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you guys all on the next episode. Hey.